This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Hey there. It's Michelle, and I want to help you to live an epic story lifestyle. So, I'd like for you to do me a favor. Go over to epicstorylifestyle.com forward slash live life to grab a free copy of my Hacks for Living an Epic Story Lifestyle Checklist. Thanks. Welcome back to another edition of Epic Story Lifestyle. Here is the woman who is not your girlfriend, Michelle Spiva. <laughs> JR, you might have to preface what you mean. Because <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll go on and get... Um, and um, at the end of another show we did, I, I, I alluded to one of my pet peeves and he's making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> that means you have to listen to the episode before this one to catch it if you're new around here. <laughs> exactly. Well, today I'm excited because I'm going to be talking about what I like to call creating immortality. And the wonderful thing that I, I, I like about being a human being, besides being a human being... <laughs> is that we have this wonderful gift called creativity. And the one thing that I, I want to say is that creativity is not does not have a special dispensation for some people as opposed to others. It is for any and all. And it is so important that if you're going to live a life that has epic legendary lifestyle ramifications you need to embrace must embrace the fact that you are a creative being and part of your job part of your calling part of what will make provision for you is that you create and the reason why we create is because our immortal souls are encased in the mortality of flesh and life but we still get remnants of our more immortality through creation. At this particular time, there was a, a, a big, I mean, a particular time of recording, uh, a, a big American artist, Prince, uh, ha has been, you know, has deceased, um, become deceased, and his legacy is living on in epic proportion. There are people doing all these wonderful tributes to him and being inspired by him and all this stuff. And there is this, this I don't know if it's true or not, you know, this is not a news show, but supposedly he has a vault full of creativity. And guess what? It is immortal because it has superseded him and it it can take any and every one of those songs can be produced and live on forever do you know how powerful that is jr that we as mortal beings can produce immortality have you ever really just thought about that I actually have been thinking about it a lot this year, especially with the work that you and I do together and other people at the Podcast Factory. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. I mean, it's in perpetuity. Heaven forbid something happened to either one of us unless they decide to take it down. I, you know what I believe? I believe even if our podcast were destroyed somewhere in space, there would still be a transmission of the podcast <laughs> going <laughs> on and on. But that is, that is what is so, so powerful. But you know what is so sad is that I see people every day quenching their own fire of immortality by belief systems and by action and deed. They don't believe that they're creative and therefore their actions don't represent that they are creative. First and foremost, if you have the ability to speak, because not everyone does and I understand that, but if you have the ability to speak, you can speak something out and it can take on a life of its own. If you have the ability to write something, you can write something and it takes on a life of its own. Do you know how I know? There's this thing called Twitter and people get in trou trouble with it every day because <laughs> they wrote something. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm serious. I look and you, it, Gr, have you have you ever thought about why people don't learn that creativity is so powerful? They will send a tweet out right after something. Knee jerk reaction. Send a tweet out, delete it, and guess what happens? It they gets still retweeted. Have the, <laughs> They still have the tweet because somebody retweeted it. Screenshots. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, come on, people. You have to know that part of our makeup is that we create. When we speak, we create. When we write, we create. When we breathe, we create. Most people think it's that big stuff, you know, like producing a kid or, or you know, producing some big tangible something. Every single moment we need to create. Um, Dr. Brene Brown out of Texas, and um, she's a psychologist uh, that I love and uh, appreciate. She talks a little bit about uh, the importance of creativity and how um, when you stifle it, the negative impact it has on people and how it can create depression and sorrow and stuff. And I was, you know, um, listening, actually, she has this book called Daring Greatly, you know, and it, it's really powerful. And it talks about this. And a lot of people don't realize that we're doing things to sp- in spite of ourselves. Everything around us ha- has been set up for us to live this wondrous life of immortality and we try to find any and every way we can to kill it. I mean, kill it down to the ground, kill it dead, dead, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, I mean, we do it by when we quench our impulse. Now, not every impulse should be let let loose, but when you quench your impulse to do good, to do right, when you second guess, And I say you, I should say us. When we second guess those things that would cause us to have a revolution of enlightenment and life. When we choose to remain sleep and um, in slumber to our self that calls to us in our dreams and even sometimes during the daytime. That one is a big one. I, I want to pause right there if you'll allow me to. Yeah. I talked with um, this this guy and uh, he was at an airport and he was an odd little bird. And I just thought he was just so fun. And I wasn't going to say anything to him because he was just doing what he did. But he passed by and he was like, lovely smile. And I was like, thank you. Likewise. And it was really fun because I had had the instinct to say something to him, but I was trying to be socially polite, not, you know, involve myself, you know, and, and that that's one thing I'll say. Public places like that, transitory places like um, uh, train stations, subways and uh, airports, they are real creativity killers. Oh, my gosh, because everybody wants to, you know, be self-contained and not get out of what the norm is. But this this young man, like I said, he he went to a different beat and it was just so fun interacting with him for the few moments I did. And it was because I knew he lived a life of full creativity and uh, he had his little backpack on and he was traveling. I didn't get a chance to ask him where he was going, but I was so excited for what he had going on and how he approached um, life. What would happen if we just took 10% of that, a 10% increase in what, you know, and what we normally do and live life a little bit more where we allow ourselves to be more creative, more expressive in who we really are. Now, I do know that there will probably be more folks getting the hell beat out of them because of their mouths. But, also <laughs> <laughs> but it would sure make for fun, fun life, wouldn't it? No kidding. <laughs> um, you know, but the thing is, is that we owe it to each other to have this, this, this dance, this tango with creativity. I've I've uh, prefaced this before, you know, there is a power and a responsibility of freedom, but there is also an obligation to create. There is, you know, I'll put it this way. Um, 
when I used to uh, counsel, be a counselor, and um, I would love it when I would get, you know, the little pre premarital relationship kind of stuff, you know, and people coming to me, I would give them a live plan. I think I've talked about this before. And I'll, you know, say, you know, in the beginning, when you're, you know, first trying to find your way and, and your, your voice is a couple, instead of telling others what he or she did, I want you to talk to the plant. The funny thing was, I would have them bring the plants back after it, I had it set up like a 13 week kind of thing. I have them bring the plants back at the end. And most of the time, the woman's plant, uh, like well, like a little ivy or rhododendron, it was crawling. She had to stake it. I mean, it was just growing. And the little guy's plant either looked just like I gave it to him or did. <laughs> I was just like, oh, my gosh, what is the problem? Years later, looking back at that and and what Dr. Brene Brown has said in her research and interacting with um, a lot of people, we as a society, we beat down people, especially gender specifically. We beat down more men where it's not as acceptable to have a creative outlet or spark. You know, there there's only so much that we'll approve of, you know, with a highbrow wink. You want to be creative? Go out there and play with your golf ball or some type of, uh, you know, sports. You know, we don't we don't want, you know, our 40 year olds going out and saying, you know, I'm going to start painting, you know, or whatever it is that might float your boat. And it gets to be really hard because now we have this epidemic where it is more of a ritual habit norm for people to believe I'm just not creative. And that's not the case. The case is you're creative, but you have spent 40, 50 years in conditioning yourself not to be creative. And therefore, you are killing yourself Mm. because you are so encased in the mortality of your dying, stinking flesh that you cannot let the sun rays of your immortal soul break forth. And when you do, it scares the total bejesus out of you because (laughs) it feels so weird and raw. You're looking around saying, did I just do that? (laughs) <laughs> you know so I oh I, there's so much that I would love to say for me as an author I'm so thankful now this is and for some of you know this is a second career for me I'm so grateful because every day I basically poop immortality <laughs> and what that is <laughs> yeah I take a, a string of thoughts I turn them into the written word I've put them down in a digital format and string it into a story and it takes on a life of its own right now you want to talk about freaking more immortality I am on book five of a series that I only planned originally to have three books for but the series has a life of its own and it has a demand of its own and so now instead of me being the creator I am the servant too (laughs) this immortal thing I think of uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in Sherlock Holmes and how you know he wanted to kill Sherlock off for so long but Sherlock became that immortal creation and people couldn't get enough of it you know those are some extreme examples but I just want you to know that your very ability to have quality of life is contingent on you being able to create because when you create you tap back into the full circle of your immortality and that is something that I think a lot of people don't understand they think that we have a terminal life where we really don't I mean come on let's face it have you ever thought about the fact that parts of you never sleep I mean seriously Jay I want to just ask you that do you, you do realize that parts of us never sleep my deep subconscious brain working while I sleep exactly never sleeps so if it doesn't sleep it must mean it doesn't need sleep and it must mean it's bigger than this mortal stain (laughs) that we call (laughs) life and I just really you know I I, I marvel at that and one thing I wanted to say about this little guy that I, I saw at the uh, at the airport he was awake that was one of the things that I loved about him In he was so creative that I knew he was tapped in to who he was he was so 
And the best way I can say it is awake and aware. It was almost as if the energy around him buzzed with excitement, wonderment, and what is this guy going to do next? Have you ever been, and that's what I want to say, have you ever been around those kind of people that you're so creative and impetuous, you don't know what's going to happen next, but you think it's going to be fun? Have yeah. you ever seen those kind of people? I think they, they scare so Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's an example of a person who is used to tapping into the immortal realm. And it's fun, exciting, and scary, especially if you're encased in a lot of mortality. But it is something that we need to embrace and to remember. Now, am I saying that every day you're going to go out and create these epic immortal tales you could. But for the rest of us, how about we just practice on starting on the basics of allowing ourselves to give ourselves permission to create uh, that, that which keeps coming to us. Like, for instance, I um, know this lady and every time I see her, she's humming a little ditty. And I'm like, what song is that? And she's like, Oh, no song in particular. I said, it's a song. You've got words to it. And she said, oh, I've done that all my life. I said, well, how many songs have you written? None. I said, but you know, you're a songwriter. She says, ah, oh, you know, she pushes it off. And if I can get that woman to just pin some of the beautiful songs that come out of her, I feel like I'm going to get a little gold star in heaven because <laughs> it's just so obvious that that is part of her expression of creativity now does your creativity have to come out in the form of the art sure doesn't um one of my good friends is a programmer and this this guy is so powerful in his creativity that every single day he gets up and he creates stuff that is a direct impact now uh of over 500 people in a company that he's built based on little code and I tell him that he doesn't see it like that but I'm like do you realize that you are a creative genius I was like you know he um he was on vacation one summer and riding in the car with uh his dad going across country and he will he coded this this thing in his car and brought it back with some uh, two partners and they launched it as a business. And now they have all these employees, but they are also able to help people make all this money online by what this thing does for people to be able to make money online. And I'm like, that is the power of creativity, creating immortality. Because even if he doesn't die, even if he leaves the company, it's at a point now where it can continue to go on and on and on it has taken on the immortal realm I was talking with him about it a few months ago and he was like that scares me <laughs> I was like don't be scared and I think that's that's the last little part I wanted to talk about you know and I haven't really given a muse moment of recent but I, I, I want to just you know say this my grandmother used to always tell me she was like you know if I can get you, she says, I'm not worried about you being afraid of life. I'm, I'm worried about you being afraid of you. And she used to always say that. And I never got it. I think I was just too, too young to embrace it. And now in my adult years, I hear that come back to me often. And I think that's what it is. I want us to not be afraid of us because of that creative power um, that can be impetuous and you not know what it can create and the power that it can create that is bigger than us. You know, that's like, you know, Jr. as a parent, you know, when your children grow up and they're taller than you or they do greater things than you, that can be a little fearful because you created it, right? But it's bigger than you or it does bigger things than you. And that's that's one of the things that I wanted to say about creating the immortal. It is OK. It is OK to be afraid of it, but still do it. We need it. We need it for ourselves. We need it for the world. And if you're going to have an epic storied life, you have to embrace that you need to create on a regular basis, just like you have to breathe. So, again, I know I, t I just 
talked about it, but I was so excited about it. JR, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> I'm 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 digging it. I'm digging it. And I, I like where you're going about creativity. I think there's definitely a need for that in the world and too many people are just burying it deep down inside of them and being ashamed of it. So I'm glad that you're talking about this, Michelle. Well, I would say if you guys are listening, check out Dr. Bernays Brown, Dare Greatly. That's a book. Um, and then she has one after that. I, um, I, I can't remember the, the name offhand. I don't want to mangle it. But if you go and check her out, Brene with a B, Brene Brown uh, books, you'll see more about this. And it is just so powerful. And thank you so much for allowing me to just even talk about this today, JR. Do you have I've a done- me moment? No me moment? <laughs> You know what? I was so excited about this that, I mean, because I think I do create now. I think that's why it's so important to me that I've been, okay, I'll say this. I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen what creativity will do. (laughs) I might not get there with you, but I, I want you to get there. So that's that's what I'm going to say that. Yeah, it's 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 just it's great. And I'm enjoying it. And I want it for everybody. Very cool. Good stuff, Michelle. Thank you. And what do you have coming up for us next time? Oh, now this one, I guess you could call it more practicality. We're going to bring it back down to more practical stuff. I'm going to be talking about the art of being self-employed. Creativity (laughs) and now art. I'm seeing a trend here. Looking forward to it, Michelle. Thank you for sharing your insight with us. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening. We'll be back next week. Hey, Michelle here again. If you like today's show, remember to go to iTunes and in the search bar, type Epic Story Lifestyle. And when you see me, hit that subscribe button. If you really like today's show, hey, come on, do me a solid by giving a rating and a review. If you've got questions, comments, or even show topics you'd like to hear me cover in the future, tell me about them when you leave that wonderful review. All right, my time is up and I thank you for yours. See you next time. Now go out, make some great decisions that give you that epic story lifestyle. This is the podcastfactory.com.